can I just finish this question? We did actually have an answer, if you recall. Um, but I wanted to show you, just in case you wanted another means of doing it, you can do it without a graph. If you have the option and you don't want a graph or you have time, you want to check, here's how you would do it. Do you remember when we were finding the point of intersection between this graph and this horizontal line? Do you remember that? I just did this. I said that x minus 1 on x plus 5 equals 5. I said, let's find when they're actually equal to each other. And because it was an equation, I could just do this. We can just multiply by x plus 5 on both sides, and everything just works. It's happy. Okay? However, that only works in equation land. You can't do that here for an inequality. You can't just multiply by x plus 5. Does anyone remember the reason why? Uh, because Correct. Um, x plus 5 is variable, because x is variable, so therefore it changes. It's sometimes positive, sometimes it's negative, which means um, you don't know what happens to this inequality. Okay, Which direction does it go? So there's a couple of ways to overcome that. The first thing is you can work out cases, but that's gross and I avoid it wherever I can. The other alternative, which is reasonably straightforward, is you multiply by the square of x plus 5, because that's always positive. right? So I can say, if I multiply x minus 1 x plus 5 times the square of the denominator. Right? What that does is it creates a quadratic over here. Okay? Over on the left hand side, you also have a quadratic, like so. Because you can see, um, you've got those. Ah, oh, sorry. That, this, square, this square canceled. This one is still there. Okay? So, so now you've got this set up. At this point, what would you do? At this point, what would you do? Um, you could expand everything. You could expand everything and then reform a whole new quadratic. Rather than two, you'd have one. Okay, That's one option. Is there anything else we could possibly do? Yeah, look, x plus 5 is already there. It's already in a factorized form. So we just need to tweak it a little bit to make it obvious. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get everything on one side. So let's have, um, let's have everything on the left. So I've got this guy. And then I've got this guy. Now I'm writing it in this fashion, rather than writing squared, to make it a little clearer how to factorize. Because you can see, oh, is this the bad one again? I can't remember. I'm just going to skip it. I've got x minus 1 of these objects over here. And I've got 5x plus 5 of these objects over here. So therefore, when I take out the factor of x plus 5, what I land with is x minus 1 from here, and 5 lots of x plus 5 over here. Is that OK? So that's less than or equal to 0. Um, I can tidy this up a little bit. I can collect some like terms. This is going to be minus 5x. So x minus 5x will be minus 4x. Then this will become minus 25. Minus 25, so minus 1 minus 25 is minus 26. That should look familiar. Do you remember that number coming up? Because we're solving the same problem, we're just looking at it somewhat differently. We want that to be less than or equal to 0. Um, I can tidy this up a little further. So I can divide this whole thing by negative 2, and this whole thing by negative 2, and then change the direction of the inequality, because I've divided by a negative. Is that OK? Do you see why I'm dividing by negative 2? See this guy in here? It's just a bit messy, right? So since I've divided by a negative number, just watch out. I've got to change that inequality. Now I can simplify. I get x plus 5. I'm left with 2x plus 13. And I want that to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Now, I can do a really rough sketch of this because um, this is going to be a parabola. This root over here will be negative 5. This root over here will be negative Six and a half, we already knew that number. So it's going to look something like this, I guess. And we want the positive parts. That's this part over here and this part over here. That's a terrible scale, but you get the idea. Okay. Um, so this one's negative 5. So I can say x is to the right of negative 5. Or this one's to the left, so that's negative 6 and a half. Now this look, should look familiar. With one subtle difference, this is not the answer we got before. What was the answer we got before? 
Yeah, it was just greater than, it didn't include this boundary, okay? So think back, why is it that I include the boundary from here, but actually I need to get rid of it? How do I get rid of it? Yeah, you go right back to the original question up here. When we did this, we actually changed the question ever so slightly. We turned something with a denominator into something without a denominator. So right up here, it's actually handy to put in the domain restriction, right? Um, x can't equal negative 5 right off the bat. So now when you connect that piece of information to this inequality, that tells you the boundary is gone, okay? And so now we have the original solution that we found, okay? Are you happy with that? Now, just have a look at that. This is still a very involved process. So that's why graphing is, I, in my view, graphing is superior because you have a picture, you, don't, you haven't changed the problem into some other problem and then have to fix it. Um, and this is also quite error prone, like this whole algebraic process, you're sort of asking to make little numerical errors or sign errors. So I wouldn't choose to do this, um, but you can and you get the same answer.